Indeed it is the Friday Out Online edition of Topic A on WYLN 530. Dave Yawkai, L.A. Tarot. We do have a number of things to fight and argue about, and I guess we can get Us? to them. Us? Oh, come now. But uh, more than, we have to look at uh, the crumbling of Pennsylvania cities, and we have two of the prime examples of it right here uh, in Wilkes-Barre and Hazleton. Now, in Wilkes-Barre this afternoon, Mayor Tom Layton gave it. You heard the number 11, and we were right. hearing that mm -hmm. it was going to be pegged somewhere between 10 and 15, so that would fit. They were hoping that they had more people take the buyout that they were offering. I think it was $400 a month yeah. and health care for a couple of years. Till the end of 2015. The, uh, that's 2015, a pretty decent yeah. deal, I yeah. think. And they had uh, 11 employees take that, including the city's purchasing agent. So now mm -hmm. we're looking at another 11 uh, layoffs on top of that. However, if you read, and I just uh, read this to the audience here a few minutes ago, uh, he does say we are hopeful that reconsideration of concessions by the union is an option. So if they, it, I read into that, if they would give up, uh, take a freeze for a year or give up a couple of paid days that maybe from 11 you might be able to go down to 10 or 9. Well, and there's no reason why they need all those holidays. Okay? There are a lot in some Flag of day contracts. and I think, uh, I don't know if election day is one of them. but Yeah, I, I believe know, it is. is I'm pretty okay. sure it is. So you have two, two, prim two election days, the primary election day and then right. the general election day. That's three right there where they can save some money. But I think that the unions at some point have to make concessions to the mayor and the mayor has to uh, talk a little more tough than he has been with them. Well, he's trying to be conciliatory because right. his relations with the unions, particularly the fire union over the years, has been a little bit salty. And I think he's trying to mend some of those wounds and not going like gangbusters and say, here's the axe, I'm going to swing it unless three of you jump on the chopping block. Uh, I think in general he's acted pretty responsibly in this. Uh, he put up a budget that included a 30 mil hike. Now already, even without the layoffs, just by the um, the voluntary retirements last week, that number is already going to come down here a little bit. Right. Uh, but, uh, I mean, the cities are all in trouble. And um, well, I, the other thing to note, though, is, and we talked about this for $79,719 right. mm -hmm. a year. Right. And he's the 49th highest paid employee on the city's payroll. So it's not and like you, so you have at least 48 people who are making 80 grand. And he's non-union, you know? And do we know who those people are? Um, have any of the newspapers published any of those Yeah, salaries? the Times leader, in fact, did publish a list, and I unfortunately didn't save it. I read it, mm -hmm. I saw it. I know there were some uh, fire and, and uh, public police works officials, people some and public that, works people, but and that included... Better way of managing it. I don't know what that is, but I'm not the mayor. But if I were, I would certainly uh, try to figure out a better way to manage it and uh, maybe work with the unions. Well, I, 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 don't, th think, I don't think the, the tax hike is going to be as big as anticipated. And I think the mayor I did a smart right. thing. I think he came out and says, okay, this is going to be the worst case scenario. And then after, um, you know, with this, I think he's going to look better because he's going to present this in a in lower, in a lower tax area. In that original budget, there were a couple of things that aren't there. There was still a couple of grand put aside for like the diamond drop mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And and on the secondary, the the, uh, the final version of the budget, because what was released was only the preliminary, and that's because of law, um, the, those things were still there, kind of like a built-in cushion. They will be pulled out, and we'll see what happens after that. You're probably right. in for a tax hike in Wilkes-Barre, but it's probably not going to be 30 mils. But now, there will be a tax hike nonetheless. Yeah. Now, in Hazleton, the situation is even wow. more dire. Unbelievable. Um, Hazleton does not use, like Wilkes-Barre has its own uh, assessment assessment system. That's why the millage figure is so different. Hazleton uses the county assessments and the county millages. And of course, they were just changed dramatically when reassessment was adopted five years ago, and we went from 35% taxation to 100% right. taxation. The general fund millage in Hazleton right now is 2.48. Under the mayor's proposal, that goes to an even four. That's okay. huge to begin with. The debt service goes from a little over half a mil, 0.54 mils, to 1.3 mils. Recreation remains at 0 0.9. Recreation is not commingled, though to tell you the truth, I've always kind of wondered why it is. And John Quigley was the first mayor to do that, and that was fine at the time when he was rebuilding the playgrounds. All that's been done. That should be rolled back into the general fund. But I've been told by a couple of people who were involved in city government, these figures do not include uh, what's known as the MM 
memo, the minimum municipal obligation. That's the smallest amount of money the city has to put up for pensions, and it is rising significantly from last year. So there will also be an earned income tax hike on top of this. Right, and that's like, what, 75%? Is yes. that a right around it? So yeah, that's it's, it's 50 and 50 at this point, but they can, they can uh, according to the Pennsylvania Economy League and changes in the uh, Act 205, the Pension Act, they can cover the cost of pensions with an EIT hike, and I know they were talking about 0.25%, so that would make it 75.50. Two questions. How did it get to this point? That's a good question. Okay. All that, right. I, you wonder how it got to that point. Question. There are a number of factors that went involved here. Um, number one, the city, during the Barletta administration, sold the amphitheater lot to Mark Development rather than continue to own it. When it continued to own it, it got a payment every year. Okay. It received the final payment from the sale last year. There's like 20 grand left or something, some nominal fee. So that was a big mistake. I remember the night that was done. I had just come up here from the standard speaker when we broke the story that night. And I spent all night walking around the newsroom going, I can't believe you sold it. I can't believe you sold it. Well, anytime you do a one-time payment, that's the scary part it, about like a no one-time question. payment. Because even, I don't know how you feel about the privatization of liquor stores, but that is a cash cow right now in Once. the state. Once. It's Once. a one-time it. payment and that's it. And then after that, it's gone. Well, Hazleton has done that for the last several years. One year we did timbering. One year, I forget what the hell else it was. But every year there's like a one-time thing to infuse cash. Well, eventually you run out of things you own and you run out of things you can sell and run out of things you can raid. And then you run out of revenue. And, yeah, yeah. and I, I did look through the budget proposal. The Hazleton budget proposal is not released in nearly the detail that Wilkes-Barre's is. Wilkes-Barre's is about a 300-page binder. Hazleton's is about 25 pages. Uh, some more detail would be nice, but I know just by looking at uh, the salaries in the executive office, for example, when we're talking like $87,000, I think there's some room for cutting there. Uh, some bigger uniform allotments than probably right. there should be and stuff like that. But none of that was done. So if you own property in the city of Hazleton, you're going to get hammered. What's going to happen with the council? Is the council going to go for this? Right I now. I mean, what's the political makeup of the council? Two, two, and one. Two, two, and one. He's got two yes votes, two no votes, and a swing man. we got to go to Joe. We'll talk okay. about that when we come back. And I'm also going to give you a hard time about something he put on Lulac. Uh, we'll get okay. all that in a couple of minutes. All right, 544 on this uh, Friday afternoon. Not to harp on this, but um, I, there are a couple of things I think that the that the, the General Assembly mm. has to do. And they may involve constitutional changes, though I'm not certain. Um, cities rely too much on property taxes. Uh, I think the mix, the cap should be taken off earned income tax. Let them raise the EIT and reduce the property taxes because they take another 3 or $4 a week out of my paycheck. I'm not going to miss it that much. Right. When I get that bill that is due and the city property taxes I think it's May 15th, and it's $400 or $300 higher than it was last year. That's a big hit. It would make much more sense to rely on earned income taxes rather than property taxes. Right, and I think that with the uh, people who own homes paying property taxes, it's kind of onerous on them. Definitely. And I know that there are people that have you know rental properties, and they have to pass that cost along yep. to, the, uh, uh, to the tenants. Yep. But I truly believe that I think everybody who lives in a city – and that uses the city services should pay. And, you know, I know that you and I have disagreed in the past about a uh, um, an earned tax just on goods or whatever. I don't know what you would tax in the city, but I truly believe that that has to be um, fair. It has to be like a fair thing for people who own homes and people who own properties. Because if you're a property owner, you're basically supporting... You're carrying um, You're carrying yes. the city. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and, and, and the services are, um, are paid for by taxpayers and by budgeting. The other thing that I I suggested this several years ago, and Kim and I talked about this briefly the other day. It's probably more theoretic now because the real estate market is so bad, but the most painless tax you will ever pay is the real estate transfer tax because it becomes part of your mortgage and you pay it over part 30 of your years. Bill. Yeah, yeah. So right now for uh, cities, uh, third-class cities, I believe it's capped at 2%, one for the city and one for the school district. Right. We should raise that to maybe 4% and do the same equal split because, again, it becomes part of your mortgage. It It's not that much money, but it's also kept paid out over the life of the mortgage. So it right. may come down to costing you another 85 or 90 cents a year. It's not that big of a hit, but the, the city gets paid when the property is sold. Right. That's a nice 
cash influx at this time. Now, the real estate market is dead around here now, but if the uh, if real estate transfer back, yeah. tax had been 3 or 4% when the real estate market in Hazleton especially was booming in 2005 and 2006, the right. city could have built up a nice big fund reserve because there is no fund balance. It is completely dry. Right. It's gone completely in this city. This right. has been terrible financial mismanagement for the last several years. Right. All right. Uh, how about Bill Dixon? Let's talk about this guy in, uh, in Plymouth. Plymouth. We talked Councilman. about this the other day, right. and they're spending a lot of money uh, to hire an attorney for $200 an hour to see whether or not he's eligible. And even if they were to judge that he is ineligible, which is a stretch, Council can't do anything about it anyway. The attorney general's office or the, or the uh, district attorney has to. Well, the man was duly elected. Yes, okay? with the and, highest number of votes. And if he was elected, and he and, and this is what, 2012? Uh, so, 2011, last okay, year Okay, so was. he was elected in 2011. Why now? He got sworn in last right. year. Why are they bringing this up now? I mean, he was a dec he was a Vietnam veteran. He ran into a problem like many Vietnam veterans had right. during the 1970s. He had a prison record. It was expunged, most of it, I believe. Yeah, the he two did state his time. charges, the two state felonies, he was pardoned by Governor Corbin. Before anybody starts making things up or reading things into it, I heard somebody call talk radio the other day and throw a real lowball slam at him that was completely incorrect. The charges had to do with with drug possession and burglary, not anything else. Right, and the thing is, with the um, with the convictions, they're gone now. Right, but isn't this what we want? prisoners who are in jail to become. Yes. We want them to become people who are good upstanding citizens. Right. We want them to be guys who form a lady softball, uh, teenage girl softball leagues. We want or, them to coach soccer. Or that are coaches in bitty football like this guy has mini, been mini for football. over a decade. Yeah, so that's what we want them to do. So I think it's hysterical that there were a lot of violent crimes in Plymouth the last couple of years, yeah. and I think they're chasing the wrong guy out of town. Really, it, it, it is really unbelievable. And what is stunning to me is that when you watch the television and you see a local reporter Joe interviewing Holden. Joe Holden from, from WBRE, from interviewing some of these guys, I mean, they can't string two words together. They can't articulate what they're trying to say. It's just, it's just a sad Well, the council president just said, that said, no comment. Go talk to my attorney. Go talk to yeah. my attorney. Go and, talk to and then they, then they talked to another guy that and they had a problem but with. Kim and I were talking about this the other day, too, as a matter of fact, and you just alluded to it. We like to talk how we want to give people a second chance. Right. In fact, in this country, we don't. Right. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do we. Right. All right. Now, what I was going to give you a hard time about, I okay. looked at LULAC this morning, and I went down the whole thing. I didn't see it for the last two days, so I don't know if you posted it today or it might have been yesterday. Might have been the other day. You said words to the effect of... And, the, and that's the key to remember, words the, to the effect. The only... I hate to bring up the race card, but the only reason I can see this president gets uh, opposition at every possible turn is race. I truly believe that. I don't think you're going to convince me. You're out of your me. mind. Look at, well, that, as if nobody's <laughs> ever said mind. that to me before. Look, the thing you is, he's been called. You have an activist president here who's been, try, who's been trying to use this office to change to change the fundamentals of this country. How could you not expect him to get opposition he every was, single term? He was elected duly not once, but twice. He's been called a socialist. People have said that they're going to oppose him from day one. He got no Republican support. No Republican support and, at all and, and for his health care bill. And that was different George Bush how, except they didn't call him a socialist. They called him a Nazi. George Bush got bipartisan support from the Democratic Party during 9-11 and after 9-11. He got the well, bill. That was a unique he got, thing, but that was the only thing he no, got. No, no, the drug on. bill, the uh, the Medicare drug bill. The he was the actually D. dragged into that he, by the Democrats. Oh, he was dragged into it. Yes. Well, then he certainly took credit for I, it in he, 2004, he did take waving the flag that, and saying, "I'd like." That to, was one of the things that some of us who voted for him go. Well, I don't think you should have done that. If only some of the Republicans had dragged Obama into something, that would be good. You he can't got drag no, this guy. You're not talking no about dealing with from, Bill Clinton. He got opposition from the Republicans from day one. Won't budge on anything. Well, you're going to see, as I said last week, that he is going to be probably one of the best presidents in the next four years. Right now, but he has one to of get the best presidents in the last in the next four in the next years. four years. He's going to have a good record, and that record is going to. He's already be on record stellar. as likely the worst president in American history. Oh, and things come will only on. get worse. Where did Where that come from? On from record, me. from you. Okay, so you're the authority. All right, here now? we go. Okay, where do you rank? Where do you rank, Chester A. Arthur, Mr. Authority? I'm not sure about. Chester.
Chester A. Arthur, but I would put uh, Calvin Coolidge probably at the top. And that blows capital your get, credibility. Calvin Coolidge, taxes. number capital one. Gains taxes go from 15% to 20% with another 5% for health care levy. So 15 to 25%. Okay. Taxes well, on you're talking dividends, about the, the cliff, right? Okay. Taxes on dividends will go from 15% to 43%. And the estate tax, which is right now 35% on estates worth $5 million, will go to 55% on estates worth $1 million. And that money has to come from somewhere. And what you're going to see Highway is robbery. that the taxes on the 250000 earned income a year and above, that, that's going to go away. I think that you're not going to see that. I think that's where he's going to give. On um, people he who are making two hundred and fifty thousand give to a million. We said here be before that if I'm Boehner or I'm McConnell, I start high and say, let's we're going to have to give in on a tax act. Let's start a four million dollars a year and horse trade there and figure you'll come out somewhere around a million, a million and a half a year. And we they're going to have to start to have these meetings here, right away. All right, we got a break yep. and uh, Joe will come back and wrap things up. Stick around. It's time again. WILN. We'll update all those numbers and all that uh, for tonight. We only got about a minute. What's wrong with Calvin Coolidge? Nothing wrong with Calvin Coolidge. I don't think he's one of the greatest presidents in the I world. I certainly do. I have a question for you. Uh, you have that parade tomorrow, right? Yes. But Thanksgiving is coming up, right? Right. Dark meat or white meat? Well, in my case, it's probably going to be hot pockets, but dark. Oh, oh, man, are you kidding me? No. Oh, we got to get one of those little baskets for you to <laughs> people come to your house or whatever. No, you know? I, I like uh, darks. And the other question is, it uh, are, are you a turkey leg or turkey breast guy? Right. I like legs, not breast. I do, too. This is amazing. Now, are you left-handed? <laughs> yes, I am Oh, left my God, this is unbelievable. <laughs> I could see, you know, years from now, we're going to be the old age home, and we're going to be fighting over fighting the, and arguing over and the drumstick. Sticks. You know? Shaking our canes at go. each other. Yes, oh my you're heavens. probably Tell right. Tell me about the parade tomorrow. Well, uh, the parade, um, you know, the, the Wilkes-Barre parade. There's always that little dispute between Wilkes-Barre and Scranton, whose parade is better. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Lisa and I are going to be at, uh, let me describe this right. We're basically across the street from the Anthracite newsstand. It's right. on mm -hmm. the it's right Market City Street Hall side, yeah. the north si the north corner of the Market Street side. The Market Street squad entering rather than leaving by the right. Pomeroy's building. And... Uh, uh, then uh, Ann and uh, Gary are going to be out in the crowd. We'll pull around as many people as we can. They really only wanted me to go this year because they said there are all these old cars and you're the only one that's going to know what they are. So that's 3 o'clock on WYLN, right? Right. Saturday night at 10.